Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening Five. Bursa Malaysia announced its highest quarterly net profit in three years thanks to higher income from the securities market. Net profit for its second quarter came in 5.5% higher year-on-year to $80.45 million, while revenue for the quarter jumped by 38% from $144.6 million to $199.94 million ringgit. It was a similar story for the first half as earnings improved by 17% year-on-year from $132.4 million to $155. 5.5 million ringgit as top line grew 29% to 387.1 million for the same period. The stock market operator now expects to make a PBT of between 361 and 379 million up from the previously announced range of 293 to 323 million ringgit. According to Chairman Tan Sri Abdul Wahid Omar, Bursa Malaysia is also optimistic of achieving its other targets for FY 2024. The group kept its target to grow non-trading revenue by 5-7% to 7% for FY2024. Among other non-financial targets, the company is also aiming to host 42 initial public offerings with 13 billion ringgit in total market capitalization. CEO Datuk Muhammad Umar Swift says that trading in the securities market remained active, contributing significantly to the exchange performance. He added that based on the current economic conditions and improved market sentiment, Bursa Malaysia are optimistic that this positive momentum can be sustained. Meanwhile, Abdul Wahid clarified that Bursa Malaysia would only be moving its front office to the Tun Raza Exchange to give meaning to the development. He explains that the front office includes its marketing segment, which will provide visibility and branding. However, the bulk of Bursa Malaysia's operations will remain at its current headquarters, he says. The upgraded Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Airport has set a curfew in place to limit aircraft operations between 10pm and 6am to control noise pollution, according to Transport Minister Anthony Locke. Following works that started in December 2023 and concluded on June 30th, Subang Airport has now managed to double its capacity from 1.5 million passengers per year to 3 million passengers per year currently. Locke explained that under the first phase of resumption of jet operations at Subang Airport, the aircraft slots will also be limited so as to ensure a limited impact on aircraft noise pollution. Five airlines, Air Asia, Firefly, Bate Air Malaysia, Indonesia's Transnusa and Singapore Airlines Scoot are set to commence Airbus A320 and Boeing 737-800 narrow-body aircraft flights out of Subang Airport next month. Transnusa will be the first to take off with a daily flight to Jakarta utilising an A320 from August 1st. The Edge understands that SKS Airways has secured slots to fly jets out of Subang Airport but has yet to make announcements on its plans. Meanwhile, the enhancements to the interim jet operations in Subang Airport involve a reconfiguration of the apron. Lok says the check-in process is expected to be smoother with 14 common-use check-in counters, 4 self-service bag drop facilities and 15 self-service kiosks to be installed. Kazana National said it has completed the acquisition of Malaysia Venture Capital Management and Punjana Capital. The Sovereign Wealth Fund said in a statement that both are now its wholly owned subsidiaries. It will begin to set up a so-called National Fund of Funds with an initial allocation of $1 billion to invest in innovative and high-growth startups via venture capital and private equity funds. Kazana Managing Director Dato Amirul Faisal Wan Zahir said the integration of MAFCAP and Punjana Capital would further strengthen Malaysia's VC ecosystem. He noted that by consolidating investment platforms across multiple investment agencies, Malaysia will be better positioned to ensure greater sustainability of funding, crowd in private capital, attract regional VC firms into the country and catalyse strategically important sectors. MAFCAP, Malaysia's largest VC investor with over $2 billion in fund size, has invested in more than 1,000 companies. Panjana Capital, meanwhile, provides matching funds to private capital and invest across all funding stages. The establishment of a national fund of funds is in line with Kazana's Future Malaysia program, which aims to support the local startup ecosystem of entrepreneurs, startups, VC and corporate venture programs through collaboration with domestic and international partners.
Logistics Solutions provider Tasco saw its first quarter 2025 net profit half to 7 million from 14.2 million a year ago, dragged mainly by a one time expense of 3.6 million, resulting from the writing off of the carrying value of a head office building at the Shah Alam Logistics Centre. The head office was demolished to allow for the construction of a new four story modern warehouse aimed at increasing the company's future logistics capacity, Tasco explained in its board. Filing. The new warehouse will create another 400,000 square foot of lettable space, which will be joined to the existing four story warehouse of 600,000 square feet. Notably, the latest quarterly earnings were its weakest since the third quarter of FY 2022 when it posted 8.81 million ringgit. Quarterly revenue inched down 1.29% to 249.93 million from 253.19 million previously. No dividend was declared for the quarter. Looking forward, Tesco anticipates a challenging operating environment. As such, the group says that it will continue to maintain its strategy to focus on servicing its customers with innovative logistics solutions and expand its logistics capacity when it is beneficial to its shareholders' value. Dufu Technology Corp's net profit jumped more than twofold to 8.42 million in its second quarter as revenue also improved. Top line for the quarter increased by 36.4% year on year to nearly 65 million from 47.7 million thanks to higher contributions from HDD components. Dufu Tech declared a single tier interim dividend of 1.5 cent per share. In contrast, net profit for the first half fell by 9.5% to 12.8 million, primarily due to lower foreign exchange gains. Revenue ticked up 222.8 million from 121.8 million ringgit. Moving forward, Dufu Tech expects a modest increase in demand for its key operational domains, precision machining and the production of sheet metal and stamping components. Additionally, global semiconductor sales and a rebound in the memory sector suggest a new growth cycle, supported by the end of inventory adjustments and increased demand in electronics and AI applications. As such, the company says it's confident that the toughest phase is now behind it and it remains dedicated to seizing these growing opportunities aiming to cultivate sustained growth. <music>